is the idea that, that it's flat yet there is no edge. That, and I'm not saying this to like yeah. belittle it. I actually am trying to visualize it. So it's kind of like you know, the idea of Pac-Man, as if someone were, if someone could look above us, that you reach the end and then you continue through. This is flat. This is a helium balloon without a fisheye lens or a GoPro fisheye effect that NASA uses in all of their videos, right? If you send a GoPro lens uh, with a fisheye effect from ground upward, it's already, everything's already bent spherical at ground level. So when it goes up, that's all you see. But when people send up cameras that have a wide angle lens on it, they don't get a curve. They see what we see. We go to the shore, we see a flat earth. You know, we, we see no, sea level, no, not sea curve. No, but when you're on the ocean, you can see the curvature of the horizon. He said that when you're on the ocean, you can see the curvature of the horizon. Well, then it wouldn't be called sea level. It would be called sea globe. It'd be called sea curve. Water is level. Water's always level. It's impossible to bend water. Not even the creator can bend water. NASA can, using a GoPro camera, but I don't think that the creator has a fisheye lens effect. If you're looking out on the horizon, paper down there, why, Heather? Do you, why do you not like... I guess it matters to the No, the, all the paper. Okay, so I'll, I'll explain. I'll explain. So, so um... No, no, no. Better, better question. I've got you. No, I've got your. I've got your answer, right? It's called the vanishing point. Why can't I see? Um, why can't I see all the way to the United Kingdom? Because you can't see more than a few hundred miles at some of the highest locations on Earth. Everything we look at, sea level, right? You can take a Nikon P900 camera right there, go to the ocean, and you think that a ship dipped over the curve, and with my camera, I can bring that ship right back into view. What's happening is that it's going beyond the vanishing point. And so with your camera, it's how your eyes work. Everything, you look down a hallway. You can't even look down a hallway with 60 doors without the, the room going up and the room going down. Horizon vanishes, all right? And, and when you go up in an airplane, if you go upon NASA Lies in Facebook, look for our group, you can go look up the second or third post, there's Pilot LX flying at 30,000 feet in the sky showing us a flat and stationary Earth for hundreds of square miles. And the idea of the globe can only be reproduced visually with a GoPro fisheye lens effect. I can't produce it any other way. I, I, I have two questions, because I'm actually coming from a place where I'm very interested in this viewpoint. Right, right. Because I don't, I feel like to just attack and, and try and prove that I'm right um, isn't, isn't really a good place to come from because, of course, I actually have not seen whether or not the Earth is a globe, so I can't prove that it is. Man, thank so you I, very much. Thank you for your honesty. Well, so, you know, we've probably encountered one of the first people that said, look, I cannot prove or see the curve. I mean, and, and that's a good yeah. thing because we want to use things that we can observe. So thanks so for I, that point. But, but the, the part that I'm, two parts that I'm curious about, I guess the one is a question that he brought up that I'm fascinated by how you might visualize it. So if the Earth is flat, how, how do you account for starting at one place and reaching that same place again? Is it well, like okay, you, so, so like here's no end to it, but here's it somehow the thing. repeats? He, he, he has not discovered circumnavigation on a flat Earth. Okay, and, yeah. and so circumnavigation on a flat Earth is very confusing to a lot of people because it's never been taught by public schools, yet sailors have circumnavigated the flat earth you can find this map in the boston public library really it's called the gleason map and can i look at it, is it okay? yeah i mean the gleason map actually you would circumnavigate the flat earth hand me the the uh the laser gun unless i have it back here well, i got it right here you have to go this one you just fall off well you can't because antarctica or ice walls surround us there's a lot of places on earth you can't go so we're saying that from our knowledge People have tried to go through Antarctica and have been blocked by ice. You just can't go. This is one of the oldest maps, right? Can I take a picture of you it? You sure can. It's called Gleason. The Gleason map. Can I? Is this the kind of thing that I can find online and absolutely. Oh, large? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. There, there's very large maps of the Gleason map. Take this home this with you. 
yeah. Facebook uh -huh. Live. We have a Facebook group, official Fire Earth and Globe discussion page. And NASA Live, 60,000 members and oh. people tuning in all over the I, flat Earth right now. We, so um, you, you said that NASA has no photographs. Well, NASA, he asked if NASA, NASA has any photographs of the sun on their website. But if you go to nasa.gov and you type in sun on their website and, and you go to the sun page, there's only cartoons. You know, why don't they have a real photo of the sun? So that's why, why? We like to have why don't they have a real po photo of the sun? And, and that's his question. Um, NASA doesn't even have a real photo of planets. They're all cartoons. There are no satellites in space. If you Google satellites in space, you find only cartoons and only animations. Surely we should have uh, satellite video of the sun. They didn't even take an eclipse video of the sun from a high altitude. You know, all, all the videos from NASA came from ground up. The rest are cartoons. What is the Mickelson Morley so the Mickelson-Morley experiment is an experiment that gauged the aether or light. Light's traveling in one direction, light's traveling in another direction. And what they do is if you're spinning on a globe at a thousand miles per hour, right, then light should move at different speeds. You know, light should um, move. But there's more to that experiment. Wait, why, I'm just, why would it move at different speeds? Well, not, 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 not that light is, but it should show a rotation of the, of the movement of the Earth, uh -huh. which should cause some type of measurable distance, uh -huh. right? It only yeah. makes sense. But but the Michelson-Morley experiment and many others prove that there is no motion in the Earth. There's oh. no way to prove that the Earth is rotating or moving. Do you feel the Earth moving? No. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm not trying to argue with you. Yeah, right, I'm, I'm right. They're, they're simple these. questions, you know? I, and, how, how do you account for Coriolis effect? Because I want to... Okay, so, so he asked, how do we count for Coriolis effect? Um, I don't, because the Earth is not spinning. There's no measurable oh. spin. We have no, no, no instrument can measure the, the, the so-called spin of the Earth. Um, you know so that the why? Earth is not spinning oh. because sea level waters in the ocean can be just flat and still for hundreds of miles. And if, if the Earth were spinning, the water by oh. centrifugal force would have to move. Although I... Isn't that accounted for in some of the large currents like the North Pacific Gyre? No, no, not at all. Well, Nobody can account for spinning of the Earth because there is no spinning. The uh -huh. Earth does not spin. It doesn't rotate. If you're rotating, you could go up in a helicopter uh -huh. and the Earth would move below you. So, the, so then currents must be coming from something else. Currents from are, wind, I guess. Well, okay, this is a great question. Where do currents come from? All right. So in our, in our, in our evidence of flat Earth, right, we believe that the flat Earth is breathing, that the Earth is breathing, right? Everything breathes. This uh -huh. is what we're taught. And this is why oceans move forward and backwards forward and backwards because the earth is breathing they they want like to that. tell us that it's because of the moon gravity from the moon uh -huh. is causing the seas to go backward and forward right yeah. well what happens when the moon is above us here in boston for 13 days straight and 14 nights straight never leaving the sky of boston for a whole week straight wouldn't the tides be screwed up beyond recognition if the moon really caused the tides to flow. I mean, take a look at this. Here's the moon that I took for my, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. This is one of the times that I filmed the moon out for about, I don't know, nine days straight uh -huh. and all night. I didn't lose track of the moon, you know, for nine days really? straight. It's in our sky in Boston That's for nine, amazing. nine, nine days. Nine days and nights? Or? Yeah, nine days and night. You go to NASA Lies, at the same time I'm filming the moon here, the moon is in Pakistan from my French with Zar Bugatti. Go look it up. NASA lies on Facebook. So what, People in the daytime, we film the moon here, and they're, they're saying, the moon can't be in Boston. It's above me in Korea. The moon is above me in Indone Indonesia. So how can it be above Boston? The moon is, is above Boston, but at the same time, it's above Australia. That's impossible. The Earth is flat. 
the only way we can all see the moon the right for five days straight here in here in the Boston area is if the moon is circling here in a very tight spiral like this and then if I see the moon in Boston Australia can see the moon while I see it in Boston thus proving that we do not live and, and on a globe what this is just one more thing because I'm curious I need to reiterate I'm not trying to disprove you okay I, this that's is right. fascinating to me what about um, differences in the direction that water drains, like toilets? Well, that's flood. a myth, okay? Really? You, you can disprove manufacturers, yeah. companies who are so involved in the ideology of the globe. I mean, I left a $70,000 a year banking job, a company that I worked for called Global. You know, uh, So I had to leave because I don't believe that we live on a globe. Um, but manufacturers are so wrapped up in the ideology of the globe and ripping you off that they build toilets to flow differently from the flush. Cars are built with climate change, or AKA global warming codes that shut your car down, that make you go pay a mechanic hundreds of dollars because thieves know that they don't live on a globe, they live on a flat earth, but if they can build that car to work around the pseudoscience of global warming, guess what? You're going to uh, realize that the Coriolis effect is nonsense. We're not spinning, my friend. We are not spinning. You know, the oldest sciences and the oldest religions and the oldest, and, and the, the oldest, you know, known civilizations all held to a flat and stationary earth. It only makes sense. What, um, did, did you believe in this uh, since... You no, 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 I, I tell, I, just like, I worked at American Atheist Incorporated uh -huh. um, as an, uh, up until 2014. Uh, uh -huh. I worked at American Atheist Incorporated. I took prayer out of 500 school districts yeah, really? in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh -huh. um, then I was challenged, or not challenged, I was told by my boss, right. David Silverman, it's time to go start discrediting the flat earthers. So you, and so oh. I, tr I tried to disprove the flat earth. And I couldn't do it. And when was that? 20, 2014? 2014, yeah. Really? The more that I researched flat Earth, the more that mathematically the, the math and the science began to make sense. Because I said, wow, if I can see Chicago all 60 miles away, I can see the shoreline of Chicago, I don't live on a globe. And you can see these measurements down here. You know, the Chicago skyline can be seen from 60 miles away. So therefore, it should have half a mile of curvature, and yet here it is. Here it is right here. Missing curvature of Chicago taken from St. Joseph. Oh, oh so, so the idea is that it should be, it should be tilted? Yes, uh -huh. right. You shouldn't see it because those, those towers here aren't 2,400 feet high. But because they're flat and straight up, they're not dipping on the back of the globe 60 miles away on an, on an earth that curves at 8 inches per mile squared would put Chicago 2,400 feet behind the curve. In other words, it'd be leaning backwards like this, you know, and you're on the top of the curve. You wouldn't see it. So that proves that the earth is flat, emphatically. You can go to Revere, yeah, yeah you can go to Revere Beach and yeah. you can see a lighthouse bottom yeah. rocks seven and a half miles away and if you do the math there should be 32 feet missing from the curvature and yet I can see the rocks on the uh, you know lighthouse on yeah. the bottom of the lighthouse so these are points that we hold to you know that that if you go to NASA right here if you go to nasa.gov every photo on nasa.gov this is on their website every photo of the sun is a cartoon is that not a photograph i've always assumed it was no they're they're animations even this yes there are no real photos of the sun on nasa.gov they're cartoons the it's owned by disney no well i mean think about it right the, it the same yeah. animators okay. the same animators look if you yes if no, you look I back here saying. if you look back here at the globe from Discover Satellite, why is the word sex in the clouds? <laughs> right, just like Disney Lion King. It's just same yeah. freaking people. Yeah. Just like the sex in the cartoon Tangle. But wait, but this, but the video is missing. Is that right? 
Well, there is no real. There, there's no video oh, oh, of I'm Earth sorry. from yeah, space. There's course. only animations. Yeah. Surely there should be a video of Earth rotating is, from space. Really fascinating. But there's not. There's no video of Earth rotating from space. There is not one real photo of Earth from space taken by a satellite. They're cartoons. They're cartoons, man. We are being lied to on a very grand scale. Oh, and this man's intellectual purity and honesty is beautiful to see. Oh. That's well, I have it's children. Not, it's not intellectual honesty. I, I'm That's curious. About I, I have this. children, I and I believe that we should be truthful so that our children can grow and really use science, really change, right. really change. See, what right. they're teaching in, in, in colleges today, that's pseudoscience. It does no good. Yeah. You know, people spend three years arguing about, you know, relativity, which they can't even prove it. Right, right. You and know, it seems useless to spend so much time when the numbers you doing? become that large talking about it. Oh, this is my friend Emily. Hi, Emily. Hi. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm What's brother I'm brother Ernest. Did you get a paper? Yeah. You got a paper? I did, yeah. Did yeah, you get one as well? Oh, yeah, I would love one. No, she sure. didn't get one. Yeah. So have you researched the flat earth? I have, yeah. I study history of science. Oh you do, you do, yeah? Yeah? And so what's your thoughts on the flat earth? Um Go that way, Heather. Yeah. What's your thoughts on the yeah. flat Earth? Heather, no. Heather, just turn uh, to her. So as a historian of science and someone interested in like philosophy of science, I'm interested in it as a phenomenon, in this movement as a phenomenon, in its social context. Um, I, from a historical perspective, will not, you know, support or deny uh, this theory. Well, hold on a second. Flat Earth is not a theory. It's something that I can mathematically prove. Right? Well, the globe is a theory. It's never been proven. Um, it's It's been held to as a religious belief. And that's okay because I used to believe in it. I had my deconversion from the globe as well. You know, mathematically, we can absolutely prove that we live on a flat earth. And, and how you can do that is if we can see, if we can see Chicago from St. Joseph um, 60 miles away, then we in fact live upon a flat and stationary earth. And I have a photo we'll pull up right here. I mean, I think it's fair to say that the globe is a theory. But yes. I think by that same token, you can only say that the flat earth is a theory. Because well, there are many what, people right. who would say that the globe, they've mathematically proven a globe. So who? unless you have empirically seen it with your senses, I don't think you can say that something is a theory or not a theory. And there are very few people who can do that, right? Yeah, but, but you have to remember something. If I cannot see a curve, if I cannot see any evidence of a globe. If I can see 60 miles away, right? right. I don't live on a globe. That's, that's, that's a problem right there. So, so when we see, for instance, I have a, a photo here of Chicago taken all the way from St. Joseph Beach, that's 60 miles away, and you can see the shoreline, then that proves that we live on a flat and stationary earth right here. So, so Ernest, I don't, I'm not trying to disprove your theory. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm, no, I, I, we're, there's I'm, a lot of people watching, right. so no, they need to catch up. I'm uh, not interested in telling you that you're wrong or right. Okay, right. But I'm interested in having everyone take all the scientific information with a grain of salt, especially yes. when it cannot be empirically proven. Correct, correct. So, yeah, so if we live on a globe, right? This is a chart you can take home with you. It's very cool. It's built by Brian Mullins, and it shows how many drops in inches or feet there should be by the distance you look away. Right. So if I look 60 miles away, there should be 2,400 feet of curvature. But when we can look 60 miles away and we can see the shoreline of Chicago, and it should be hidden behind a curve, then I say, observably, I live on a flat earth. From what uh, height was this? Photo five foot seven inches okay. so according to you know the spherical trigonometry you should right. only be able to see three and a half miles away so, so but then what would you say to people who say they've empirically seen the curvature of the earth i would ask them what is I've, your empirical I haven't been evidence to St. Joseph, and i also haven't been out of space right so i don't have i can't say I've i would been. ask them this if somebody says i've seen the curve i would say can you show me where that curve is where have you seen the curve? They say, oh, I've seen it in an airplane. And they don't know that airliners build planes with windows that are convex, that are curved. Um, however, Pilot LX on Facebook, he's right down here. Um, 
Pilot LX is showing people hundreds of miles of flat and stationary earth. He's actually breaking aviation walls by filming from the cockpit of a you know 757. Um, so there, there's no measurable curve that you and I can see. If we go to the ocean, the water's flat. You know, and so if there's a curve. I shouldn't be able to see 60 miles away at ocean level. But that's for me. That's, you, you know, and, and many others are saying the same position. They're waking up to that. I can see great distances away, and that's impossible on a globe. Um, kind of our position. But how you doing? Uh, Heather, do you have a card or an email that I can take down? It's on here? Right here. Okay, yeah. I'm just, um, I've been starting science. I'm just really interested. In uh, are you a Harvard student? I am, yeah. Really? What year? I'm a junior. A junior. Wow. Invite us in for a debate. I, yeah, I would you love know, to. I, I, yeah. and, 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 you know, we've been at MIT, right, right. Yeah. Um, and we've converted PhDs of mathematics uh -huh. to the flat earth right there on the uh -huh. spot because of yeah. this globe killer. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'd love I'd love for you to invite us in. Brother uh -huh. Will and I would, would yeah, be I mean, happy to come in. Yeah, at the very least, I would love to interview you guys or something. Uh, it's really great. It's really great, great. Um, um, I just hope you keep researching, you know. And, and yeah, I mean that's my job as a student. You know, don't have anything else to do. So, uh, how, so, so, what do you plan to do with your degree after you finish? Um, I'm really interested in science writing. Yeah. Um, and also in policy work. Um, uh, comes to environmental policy and health policy. Um, mostly I'm interested in science and medicine. Uh, I mean, history of medicine, but, um... Well, I grow cannabis, so and I heal people with cannabis. Yeah, I'm very interested in this. I'm interested in, uh, alternative medicine. Um, I have a lot of friends who are interested in it. Uh, I grew up with parents who are doctors. Somebody just said she's cool. <laughs> What's your view on vaccines? Oh, um, I think we're getting past the point. I will just say that I have had many vaccines. Yes. Yeah. And I think that I think that whether or not vaccines are cause uh, autism spectrum disorders, right. I believe that that claim is a offensive to people on the autism spectrum. To right. say that it is worse to be autistic than to possibly die of a life-threatening disease, right? And it's also can be selfish because there's, you know, the proof is, you know, iffy. Iffy, right? Yeah. So I mean, there's she's skeptical. She's skeptical. That's awesome. I mean, I'm skeptical of people. Yeah, that's incredible. Wow. That's why I like studying history of science. I think the epistemology of science is fascinating. Right. Um, how we build scientific knowledge. How we accept it. I'm really interested in how people, how scientific information is conveyed to the public. Because obviously, most of it is things that people can't understand. Like I, you know, have taken advanced calculus and I. Would never be able to derive these values on my own. You sure can. It's really simple. Math is not hard. Math that you can observe is simple, right? Math that is wrapped up in relativity, you know, relativism, and this nonsense that they teach in colleges is so confusing. You know, that, that well, you can figure it out because if you live on a ball that's 24,900 miles, the Earth should curve at 8 inches per mile squared. So every mile away, 8 inches, 32, so on and so forth, it should square. It's very simple. So if something's uh, 10 miles away, 10 times 10 is how much? And that says 100. Times 8. 800. Right. Divided by 12. Just divide it by 10. It's easy. Okay. That's, bad. That's how many feet there should be of, of curvature. So if you're looking at this and you go 10, 10 miles away, 10, boom, 66.8, 800 inches, 66 feet, right? So that's how simple it is to figure out the curve. It's just the miles that you're looking away by the miles, and then you square it times eight. But I think it's important to note that doing these kind of mathematical observations doesn't just require intellectual strength, it also requires time and energy and funding. Like, it's not, like to do all of these values, I mean, to go out and make these observations by itself would take time. And well, right, for a right. lot of people, I mean, right. this is the problem with science is that... Well, that's why we go to places is, like Revere Beach and, and, and we, right. we film lighthouses, you know, 12 miles off the shore. And if we can see the bottom of a lighthouse that's 12 miles away, 12 times 12 times 8, tells you how far that distance is, you know, and if you're looking at that, you're, that's over 60, you know, 60 feet that, 
should be hidden behind the curvature. And so we show people this stuff. Hey, look, you can see that lighthouse. This is science that we can observe. And if they say it's a globe, you know, I shouldn't be able to see the lighthouse at all. And, you know, so we go there or during the eclipse, you know, we went to MIT and said, hey, students. Well, you know, my take on the eclipse is when the eclipse was happening, right, I opened my eyes and looked up and all the MIT students came running up and they're like, brother, Ernest, you're going to go blind. Um, and of course, I didn't go blind. Right? Well, I don't you didn't think it need... happens quite like that. Well, no, actually, they say if you look at an eclipse from our area, you can damage your retina. Well, you can. I mean, yeah. you can damage your retina just as much as watching the sun. On an I watch the sun all the time. Yeah, I stare at the sun. Many ancient civilizations have stared at the sun on some of the highest mountains. And I stare at the sun at high noon all the time. Just take my glasses off and look up. And I'll look up at the moon. And she'll be like, hey, we need to go. Let's go. Um, so nobody has ever been injured by looking at the sun. Nobody has ever been injured once with their eyeballs looking at the sun. Uh, at the sun. You know, the Cherokee, the Comanche, many of the uh, of those people, they looked at the sun to strengthen their eyes. Well, I think, that is true. I think part of the issue, though, though is so. people in those times didn't normally live long enough for retinal degeneration to present itself. Well, there's stories of some of the Cherokees living up to 100 years old. I mean, people lived a long time. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. you what? Sample size is pretty small. Right? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. Look, I know that through history, people have lived long, sure. yeah, long sure. years. And we know people have lived from 100 years, um, you know, 70 years, 80 years. I, I just look at it this way. When people tell me, oh, man, you used to live 30 years, and that's it, I would say people in the Jean dynasty used to live to 110 years old. How's that possible? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the Jean dynasty and the Asian dynasties were a different culture altogether. You know? Yeah, so I, I think that we could be living a lot worse now than then with the foods. I'm a vegetarian, so I want to live for a long, I want to live for a long time. You know, and I don't want to be ingesting chemicals and I know that there's vegetables and, and chemicals and waxes but you know I'm yeah. going to live a long time I hope. Anyways, brothers, uh, I think we are gonna head out but yeah it's very so talk very nice me. talking to you. So long. Nice yeah, hey, thanks what's your name? Yeah. My Look name's us Heather. up on Facebook. Heather, nice to meet you. Nice meeting thanks you well. too. Um, what a discussion. Wow so so you know we're we're going to eventually get invited into Harvard well you know we've already been invited into Making debate yeah we we've, we've been invited into in debate the the loonies those, yeah. those uh you remember those hollow earthers oh my god oh man those people were See what off comes their, of that. Yeah. yeah they were off their charts thanks to Heather for filming yeah. Georgina Burton, I have no idea what you're asking. I'm sorry, I've been on the other side of the calendar. Um, yes, Jackie, I stare at the sun all the time. Sun gazing <laughs> does heal your eyes. It absolutely does. And having having some of those some of those slides we have are really helpful. Yeah. You know, um, so I've got some videos. Uh, ships coming back into uh, into focus over the oh, nice. over the magical curve, yeah. you know. So once we get those out, we'll be able to look at all those. Brother Will and I and Sister Heather and Sister Kelly, we miss you so much. Wish you're out here, flat earthing with us. It's a nice, calm night, you know. People know about us. They, they're already coming out to see us. Th that couple over there, um, they knew about us and came out to meet us. Uh, it, it's overwhelming the amount of people that have watched Brother Will, Joshua, and I, and Sister Kelly, and others debate um, is amazing. Amazing the amount of people that that actually watch. You know, more people that watch, it's better than them sitting home watching the news. You know, this is the news. This is the real news, right? <laughs> Um, the real news right here.
That's the Globe Buster, people. That'll cost you about 30 to 40 bucks to print up in your area. Um, or I can get it printed for you here in just a couple of days. Once our printers arrive, we're really excited. So while it's quiet, yes, sir. It's being stereo. Yeah. So that science information gets in touch with us. That's that like that is that would that would be like out of this. That would be able to. We just have to scale. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of it's a good page. It is. That page it should be also, like, but it shouldn't be. Yeah, you know, we're, we're talking about my website, nasalize.org, because it's undergoing um, an entire stripping of data to remove religion out of the site. Reformatting. Um, reformatting, right. That's what it's called. <laughs> yeah. And, and NASA Lies right now is forwarded over to my website right here. So um, it's forwarded over to that site right there. And... Um, I never thought, you know, when I built this site in 2014, well, truly, I never thought anybody would look at it. I never thought anybody would look at that site. And the thousands of people that tune into that site each month blow me away. I, I'm just amazed. However, I cannot get into colleges with a religious website. Um, NASA Lies is a 501c3 educational organization is what NASA Lies is being turned into uh, so that we can get into school. Sometimes you have to play, sometimes you have to play hand with the devil. The devil's going to throw you a card. If you want to play at my table, um, then you're going to have to play by my rules. And can we win by those rules? Well, as an educational 501c3, um, I think we can. I, I really think that that we can fight as an educational organization, sue the United States government, and win on the on that point. Um, in order to get into a debate into schools and colleges, all religion has to be taken out to the site, uh, and, and I'm okay with that because the more one researches the flat Earth, the more that they do find a creator. We have them here. They show up here all the time. Look, I can show you. Um, I have a lot of video that we've taken that is not released to the public, um, and then a lot of video, you know, that that like this this fella right here, you know. Hopefully, you can see this right. So you know, he was a atheist. Man, wow! Does that not show you that the, the you do not need a college? Let's see right here. So in this video, you know, this person actually can, you know, tells us, hey, you know, I watched, I watched you, I saw you the last time you came out, and I was an atheist, and um, look, so he was an atheist, and now an atheist has come home. Isn't that so beautiful? An atheist found the creator. You know, uh, this is the video we had out there. You know, I, I just. When, when eight, and I'll post this on the wall, everybody, so that you can watch it. But that's just one of hundreds who have reached out to me, Brother Ernest. I'm no longer an atheist. I'm no longer an agnostic. I know that there's a creator. And I never asked the person, you know, well, what creator did you find? Which creator did you believe in? 
Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, right. The, the beautiful thing that I have found about most flat earthers that, that embrace flat earth to where it changes their life, they begin to quit eating meat and quit, quit sacrificing animals in their diet. And I know that a lot of you have a problem with that. I'm just telling you where I am in my walk with the Creator. I'm just letting you know that that was important to me, that when I found out that the Earth was flat and stationary, I didn't want to kill another animal for my diet. I feel it, the same way. And, and no way, no way would I keep peace shock over a, over a slaughtered lamb. And when it goes into my religion, right, uh, that, that I follow, well, you can see hints and traces of, of things in the New Testament books where, um, the, where, where Jesus, a.k.a. Um, a.k.a. Yahshua, did not eat meat on Pesach, Passover. He went and he took of the stalk of corn. And the Rabboni of that time said, you transgress the Sabbath. By picking up the corn, he didn't want to eat. The, he did not want to eat the slaughtered lamb. And you can look at look at that doctrine, uh, uh, much of that history, because the Nazarenes were vegetarians in that time. Many people were. You know, it just makes sense not to to eat meat and not to not to put blood in your mouth. You know, it's just the lust of the flesh blows me away. And and in, in my life, that was very important. I let go of that really quick. And um, it's a quiet night, Will. It is. Yeah, it's a really quiet night. Uh, but but that's what happens with a lot of flat earthers. They quit eating meat. They quit drinking alcohol. Um, they do start finding cannabis and if and they drugs. Didn't find cannabis first. Right. A lot they, of people find cannabis first, and then they go on the conspiracy journey as well. Right. Right. And then yeah. and, and then the drugs they are on the pharmaceuticals. They just get thrown away. They get pushed into the trash can, and then they start using um, vegetables or certain herbs and plants that enlighten your chakra. Yeah, food you know, is real medicine. It's real medicine. Vegetables. Vegetables is real medicine. Hopefully you all can hear us. Yeah, food is medicine. Food is medicine. Meat, meat is your death. It'll bring about your death. You know, the leading cause of uh, impotence in males is from eating red meat. Yeah, it destroys the walls of your vascular system. It destroys yeah. the walls of your vascular system. And your digestive system. So your heart, your stomach, all that stuff. Just destroyed, huh? Man, we need a long boom pole for a phone. All right, everybody, we've been on for a little bit of time. Um, we're going to have our phone ready. Or I tell you what, you know, we'll just leave it sitting here. The problem is, is that we'll start utilizing a lot of data. So let's take a look back here for a minute. And then we'll take a break, everybody, and come back and then talk to you in just a moment. Once again, Sister Kelly's paintings, they're so cool. The Globe Smasher right here. We need to fix this right here. We'll come back, everybody.